I prefer it. I don't know what it is. I prefer longer run, like not long, but middle distance runs. I I can't get into runs that are like um, multiple hours. Can't do that, but. Like in Mario Kart, I'd do 16 tracks. Which is like 45 minutes. So a little bit more than this. Or actually, no. Same as this. Same as this real time. But obviously with the loading times. Mario Kart's full real time. What are we in now? Hammer V1. God damn it, it's a camo. I like blue. Every Mario Kart track run. Yeah. The every Mario Kart track run. That's even more brutal. Is you have to do every single track in every single... Um every single category so you have to go through in 50 cc then 100 cc then 150 all of them i think it for that one i think it might be more then there's the, there's another one there's the 100 percent mario kart uh Mario Kart category, which involves if you're playing DS, you have to do all of the mission modes. You have to do all the mission modes, you have to beat all the staff ghosts. Ah, oh, yeah, it does feel a bit less twitchy than the last two cars. I couldn't for the. I tried doing it in the last stage, but I couldn't for the life of me keep the grip in any corners so I just decided I was just going to send it because like it's a car I've driven when I started I'd driven the car for nine kilometers and one event which probably means I did a daily that I've forgotten <laughs> yeah 17 hours is for every track in whatever CC you want yeah, Tukin's been talking about doing the all career mode. I hope he does do it at some point. I said I'd join him for it. If I know when it is. Because I was going to join him for it. And I'm... I think it would be fun to not just do all career mode. But once we're finished doing all career mode, do all the free roams. Just to have, like, one... 100% Although the true 100% is whatever time my steam says after I've finished all of this shit The 100% world record that's going to sit like 260 270 hours All custom rally speed run. Well, it's about six days is the genuine answer which if if this so it could be a fun with multiple people kind of marathon if this game gets massive and i could become a professional full-time streamer um which i don't know why anyone would watch me because i'm dog shit but if i become a professional full-time streamer for this game it's an entirely doable like subathon type thing i will play every stage in the game donate bits to vote for your favorite car you know and that's the car that I'll run in the next uh, next run but yeah my oh you fucker I, I said I mentioned it the other day. We could um, 
it's almost the sort of thing you'd be able to marathon with a couple of people. But yeah, my, uh, when I finished group three, I was at three days real time on the playlist for, that I've put all of the speedruns in. That includes, obviously, the bonus vehicles that I did first. Oh yeah, you'd need to do it in person. Team event in person. New account, just to fuck up the leaderboards a little bit. I think we'd have to do it offline. It'd have to be. We'd have to have to turn the game offline, because uh, otherwise, can you imagine? We buy a new account and fucking like no one's gonna notice my times. They'll be down in like hundredth place, but there's a good chance one of you lot gets a top ten <laughs> across a thousand tracks. Plus, it'd be insane to get the. Um, we'd get the achievement for if, if we did do it on a brand new account we'd get the achievement for 1000 stages ran halfway through that's true it's not smurfing if it's a charity it was insane when I hit a thousand stages in this challenge and noted that and you know wrote four digits into the YouTube title box uh, when I did Sardinia Sardinia Wet I think was the one that got me over the thousand in group three when I did that and I thought god when I first saw that achievement and I thought that's going to take me a while and at the time I thought that, that achievement could be a lifetime achievement because at the time speedrunning wasn't really it was a thing that I'd looked at but I wasn't too sure if I was going to actually get into it and dailies and weeklies were kind of more what I was thinking about going for and it was at the time the game after I finished the game the main career it was like I might play a bit of the you know the, it was season 2 of AORC was kind of in the works so I was just kind of playing the daily every day playing the weekly every bit I haven't played a daily or weekly in ages now because I'm literally like that's 20 minutes that I'm not grinding this and especially with like yesterday for six, uh, 6 hours 44 minutes streaming yesterday not all of it in game but fucking brutal grind at the minute I just want this done because like all I when I'm sitting down I'm like oh I want to play a game it's this I just want to fucking grind this like it's brutal so I'm just going to grind it till it's done if I can get it done the worst part is I'm now thinking like if I get it done before the end of the month then I can get it done, do the Xenotic um, Defrag World Records for last month, get them out the way and I'm technically not uh, technically not late on it, because as long as it's released the month after it happens, it's fine. Get that done, then spend like 10 hours uh, taking screenshots of all my times because that's going to be a brutal grind as well because it's if you do the plan is once I've finished this take a screenshot of every level of every time and some um, and set it for one second in a video it's gonna be a 32 minute long video 32 minutes flat So that's the plan, and then talk over that. I, when I realised it was 32 minutes, I sort of thought, how am I going to fucking do this? <laughs> and I honestly... 
I don't. I, I definitely don't have 30 minutes of stuff to talk about. So I think it's pretty much going to be a. A, t a talk about it at the start, duh, 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 however long it takes. And then probably right at the end, a few words that don't mean anything. Art of Rally music in the background, obviously. I'll just, just dump the soundtrack in the background of it. Um, and yeah, that'll be the... That's the plan for immortalising it. So the other thing is I don't want to do too much grinding. It's difficult because obviously half of these records are still going to be different sets. But vinyl recordings, holy shit, that's cool. I mean, I was just going to yoink them out the game files or off of YouTube. It, it's highly likely that I was just going to dump, find a YouTube playlist of them and dump them. Yeah, you can buy the soundtrack, I probably will. Probably just buy the soundtrack off of the Steam... Uh, Steam thing. Look at that, 13 quid. It is an incredible soundtrack. What is it on GOG, actually? I have heard in the past that GOG is often cheaper with soundtracks because Steam takes... Steam takes hefty cuts, so quite often... it It's difficult to put different pricing for different stores for the actual game, but for non-game items a lot of places are different. And I... Actually, no... I doubt it's DRM'd if it's on if it's a soundtrack on Steam. I do actually also need to unwish list Art of Rally on GOG because it's the only thing I have left on my GOG wish list and it tells me when the game goes on sale every bloody time. It's like the game's on sale, twenty percent off. I don't care, I've got it. I need to unwish list that. Glad I didn't get it on GOG though. Very glad I didn't get it on GOG because something I didn't realise is the Linux version can't play online. It's the reason that Thematic hardly ever uploads times online because the Linux version of GOG you have to run it in some super specific way to have the times go online. So it's why quite often Thematic's got... which is bollocks because thematic's got bloody um like a few world records that aren't aren't on the leaderboards they are definitely legit world records because they're he's got video proof of them because obviously it's all well and good going <laughs> you can change the leaderboards.txt to say whatever the fuck you like it's all well and good doing that but no the guy's got video proof he's a very good driver one of the reasons I think he's not too fussed about uh, constantly playing no clutch because no clutch is a video proof standard anyway it's not going to be on the leaderboards but yeah it's not ideal with it it's kind of the thing um, I expect to see Mario Kart 8 get uh, for the Wii U get a proper online leaderboard soon because it's never had a proper online leaderboard because everybody's used the in-game leaderboard because it was all fine to use but just before the servers shut down it got completely overrun by hackers like all the times are one second and there was a way to do only one lap and it counts as three all that sort of shit happens Come on, leaderboard. Load. Upload my time. I 
I'm also going to have to go through and if anything says local, I need to fucking redo it. Uh, you should be able to send links. If it bans you, uh, I pressed the wrong button at some point. I've had so many bots and there's so many settings on Twitch that I've got fuck all of the idea what it is. Like, certain settings I've got. So you constantly, every time Twitch is updated, like they used to have one version of automatic filtering and then one, uh, then they had another, then they had R9K and everything I've had to turn it off every bloody time it's like I don't care why are you giving default options that mostly apply to people who have 10,000 viewers because R9K when it first came out was absolutely brutal for uh, for small streams because it came out at the same time that they added that waving thing like, say hi. R9K to bop you for that. So if someone had done that in the last five minutes, you wouldn't be able to post that message. They'd just tell you you can't post it because it's too similar to one that's already been sent. Hi and hello would all get blocked and shit like that when it first came out. It was absolutely rough as all fuck. I'll take a look at the run after this. Oh, shit. <laughs> I love it when tree like your car just acts like a bouncy ball when they hit a tree. It's like ba doing and I'm back on track. I love this section. This is probably my favourite section in Sardinia. Just this like the one bit of tarmac in Sardinia. Such a good fucking section. I ended up stuck with my nose facing down in a logging truck and I literally couldn't drive out of it. Pretty, I, I've so far never had a situation where I've had the ability to definitely touch wheels to ground because the car was bobbing like when I accelerated or reversed it was moving but not be able to get unstuck from a location. And it wasn't enough, apparently I wasn't enough to get auto reset either. Because it didn't auto reset me while I was just revving and hoping for the best. Yeah, little town section's cool. Little love tap, straighten the car up. Strongest little plastic wire that anyone's ever made, though. I, I have a vengeance against this stuff. The little plastic webbing. Red plastic webbing. Because they use it at bike races. And it's like, that's just going to get a handlebar caught in it. And it does, every time. It's like, what the fuck are you doing? Putting something with holes that are about as wide as a handlebar. Near to handlebars. Or you snag a brake on it, or something like that. It's brutal. This is a laggy bit. Coming for some reason coming this way lags, but coming the other way doesn't.
Oh yeah, Felix, have you merged my pull request yet? God, these bloody maintainers, you know. Gotta get the repairs in while I still got a chance before it bugs out again. You gotta merge it before you rewrite it in Rust. I was also thinking, you know you were saying about making a script that you can get like Group B Finland and that's it. It's almost certainly gonna be easier from a code, pers code base perspective to make that a whole new script. A script that only does one track, one, uh, not one track, one country, one car, potentially adding one direction, one, uh, one what's it, skips out on all the for loops. Also, I should probably go through the code. Now I've done all those if statements. There's a couple of if statements that could become if and, which would make less nested loops. But also, it may be best to put the for loops within... Uh, ...within thing. And is basically good when you when you're going if this, and then the next the only thing within the if statement is another if statement. If the oh, and there's no else, there's no anything like that. If the only thing in the if statement is another if statement, just put if this and this. Yeah, like and and. But it's Python, so you won't use that, you'll just type and. Yeah, there's just an else else sat in the middle of nowhere. It doesn't look like it's attached to anything. You can't work out what the fuck it's attached to, but it's attached to something three branches higher. Yeah. Yeah, I want to do that too. You could do that in Python too. That's why I got confused yesterday trying to do OR and it doesn't give you a proper, like, thing. And I'm like, I want to do two pipes. I think the only reason they don't let you use both is because otherwise people would use both. And obviously Python already has the problem of different people using different settings for fucking everything.
Yeah, manual. Are there any bad Group B cars? Like, particularly... Or particularly out there from the rest. Not particularly bad, but like something like Wedge in Group 3. Where it's just... Handles like an absolute piece of trash. Retro B7. Is that just slow or does it just handle differently? Uh, oh yeah, that's... Yeah. It's the one Frankie said... Um, you use the rot is, is it the one that Frankie says you use the rotary B7 then you go back to a different car and it feels like they're all an absolute boat. Oh yeah, I'll be in the uh, Rotary S7, or 8, or whatever the fuck. Group S, Group S Rotary. Yeah. Okay, so that one will be brutal. Yeah, Group S Rotary. It's like every rotary car is top class. Like the B7, it's there, handles like, you know, handles like shit, but it's there. The S7 is head and shoulders above the rest. The uh, Group 3 one, that's generally considered to be the best not quite as much as the S7 but I think that's possibly one of the reasons that Group S doesn't get as much love in this game like it should get so much love because that is the thing it's always the thing I'll say S Group S should get played more because that is the thing that this game is about Like, the whole premise of this game is that Group B never got banned. All the Group B cars that are in the game are actual Group B cars that did get rallied, even if they only got rallied for a season or two. Um, but Group S was, was banned, and it's not in other games. Because, well, you could put it in Dirt Rally, but... How are you going to make sure the stats are about correct? Is the problem. Whereas here, it didn't matter that the stats were perfect. But yeah, it, I think it is one of the reasons that people don't play it so much is because... For casuals, it's not Group A. So, you know. When you finish the campaign, the first thing... Because it's the same thing that I I did when I first started playing. Finished the campaign. First thing I wanted to do was fuck around in, uh, in the fastest class in the game and do some time trials and stuff. And I went and did uh, a bit of the free roam and time trials in the fastest class in the game. Group S never happened. Group S was the continuation of Group B with even less uh, restrictions. Um, group B got banned because it was fucking dangerous and the cars were ridiculous and people were die like spectators were getting hit by the cars, which to be fair would have happened whatever the cars were like. But also the very lax, uh, very lax regulations meant that fuel tanks were made out of paper stuff like that no it was never ran it, it existed there, there's prototypes of the cars because they were it was anticipated to come two years after they banned group B or something so the prototypes were there it, but it was never it was certainly never ran at the WRC but it might have been ran at 
Uh, there, there might have been rallies unofficially. But yeah, it was canned. I, so my, I don't know if the game actually has some sort of law behind this, but my person, please don't tell me if it does because I like this better. <laughs> Um, my personal opinion on the lore of the game is you get Group S, Group S happens, Group B never gets banned, Group S happens, right? How do we then get to Group A? Well, we get to Group A because all the manufacturers realise that their Group S cars look fuck all like the road-going vehicles. They can't sell any cars because they don't look like the cars that people are actually driving. It's not helping them with any development because it's so different. Which I think is actually where we're going to end up going with uh, the WRC now. Just the fact that um, they don't look like the road going cars because of the amount of aero on them. When you put a Ford Puma, it's always I'm always going to go back to the Ford Puma, but when you put the Ford Puma rally car uh, Ford Focus road-going car and the Ford Puma road-going car the rally car looks more like the Focus in terms of shape and size it's just the bodywork that makes it look like a Puma because they want to sell a Puma but SUVs are dog shit for rally because they're too tall and the Focus is a brilliant rally shape yeah, Puma, all the SUV road cars should just be fucking put in the bin. <laughs> they look like them until you put them literally side by side. The bodywork is fine. The, the bodywork makes them look like it. But when you put them side by side... Like properly, they just the the shape and the size and the way that they stand on the road and all of that sort of thing. Yeah, you recognise the model behind it, but I think it's going to get worse and worse. And there's already manufacturers. One of the reasons lots of manufacturers aren't doing rally is because they said we do rally and it doesn't actually give us any R and D for the road going car because they're so different, because they're built on completely different basis. So it's not giving them R&D anymore, which is like one of the reasons that... It's the reason that Group 4 was so popular in Rally. Group B took over because they wanted to sell stuff. And the reason that Group A was then so popular after Group B was because the cars looked like the road-going cars and they were pretty close in terms of design and that sort of thing. And like, yeah, you've got to make a few souped-up versions of, of your sporty model. Well, yeah, well, uh, no, because the cars did look pretty pretty close. Group S wasn't. There was no way they were going to sell a Group S car, but the start of... No, but they were to sell the regular model. Like, the, the Lancia Delta looks like a Lancia Delta. A, it, it has the basic shape and model of the boring road car. But yes, it is... It is closer to what we have now, where they're very, very off the wall. The first version, the f the early Group B stages, it got further away the longer they went into Group B. But the early Group B stages, yeah. But yeah, it practically did share head <laughs> headlights and windscreen by the end. I do love the Lancia not making half the cars they were supposed to because they like Group B had so few cars you had to make compared to literally anything else. 
that it practically was just one step up from prototype of 500 cars and they still couldn't be asked to make them all. But at the same time, it's like, Lancia probably wouldn't have sold 500. Like, L Lancia were probably pushing to sell 500 um, regular uh, Deltas at the time. Right. Cheers, Tabo.